getting it. So, and uh, Julien Blanc sitting here in San Francisco. And what we're gonna be doing right now is shooting into a video to talk about being results oriented. Because what you're gonna learn in this work on this channel is how to shift your inner state. But what we wanna focus on is how by shifting what's going on inside you, that makes you very, very dedicated to getting external results. Whether that's results in your health, wealth, relationship, higher purpose, being effective, being sharp at what you do, making great decisions, shifting what's going on inside translates to shifting the results that you get on the outside. So if you're somebody who says, I'm about results, then what we wanna show you is how this type of work, shifting your inner state, changes your outer results. Everything that I've done has been to get results. Everything Julian has done has been to get results. So if that's the case, when Julian is teaching programs like Transformation Mastery or coming from an inner game perspective, what does that mean? What does that mean if our orientation is results oriented, but we're maybe saying things like, let go of trauma, let go of negative energy, Focus on the process. As much as I'm talking about being results oriented, you're not, I hope it's convincing to you. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I hope it's convincing to you though. I pushed myself to the brink of, there's been times I've been doing a seminar, I thought my heart was gonna pop out of my fucking chest and I kept going. You guys ever see the video where a gunshot went off behind us and we kept going? We're very dumb, we're idiots. It was in Seattle in front of a troll. Okay, the Fremont troll, we're idiots. It was like towards the end of the video. We just do that because we're so locked in to get that video. We're like, if we get like probably like 95% chance we don't get shot. So we're just gonna finish the video. That's the level of obsession, okay? Say the word obsession. obsession. Okay, say the word relentless. relentless. Okay, you guys ever read Relentless by Timothy yes. S. Grover? It talks about being iconic. He coached Michael Jordan, he coached Kobe Bryant. He talked about being an icon. He calls it a cleaner, a closer, a cooler. A cleaner is somebody, what is it? Oh no, there was so cooler is like the everyday average Joe. Cooler is somebody who's good to go, you right. can throw them in the game. A closer is somebody who's really amazing. And a cleaner is that person who's gonna get it done no matter what. There is no excuse. There is a bloodlust for results. And as soon as you get that result, on to the next. You understand? On to the next. That's part of being a man. Most guys that I see are disengaged. One example I've often shared is I, one time I remember I went to Diesel Jeans. I want a pair of new jog jeans because I like Diesel jog jeans. Recommend them. So I pull out of my pocket because I have, I have tricks for everything. So I pull out of my pocket 1200 bucks, this big thick wad of cash. And I say, hey man, I'd love to buy a couple pairs of jeans. Could you go run to the back and grab me some of this type? I think it was like Diesel Cruelly jog jeans. And the guy goes to the back. Now why do I pull out cash? What's my mentality behind pulling out cash? It's just to show them, show them that I'm serious. Right. I'm not fucking around. If you go get them quickly, I'll buy them right now. That's all I'm showing him. I do stuff like that a lot, just to show people I'm serious. I only do it when I am serious. So I tell him that. He comes back and he looks at me and goes, sorry, don't have that model. <laughs> you know what I thought to myself? I, I have two sons. Whatever they do in their lives, I don't care. I don't need them to be the second coming of the stuff we teach. <laughs> They're probably not gonna be. They would probably think it's ridiculous and find it annoying. Their dorky dad doing all this dorky stuff, right? To them, it's like probably not cool, you know? But they, they think I'm cool now, but they're like seven and nine. So, you know, in about three years, I will cease to be cool. I'll see them again another decade. So what you have, I'll try to see them. I'll just hope they won't see me. So I don't care what they do. That's fine. But there's one thing that I care about. They could do anything they want but don't be the guy at Diesel. You can even work at Diesel, by the way, and I'll love you. But don't be the guy at Diesel who sees someone pull out 1,200 bucks and then just tells them to leave. You come back with another pair of freaking jeans or tell a girl who's there that he would look cute, be like, tell him he'd look cute in those jeans. Find a solution. The word is engagement. Say this word with me. Engagement. engagement. Say it again. Engagement. engagement. Listen, my grandmother was a beautiful woman, okay? She had six sons, and she died of lung cancer at, t at 65 approximately. I was 16, and she called me on the phone. I knew she's going to die. I knew that her name is Velma Cook. This is going to be the last time I was ever going to talk to my grandmother. My grandmother shot six hole-in-ones in golf. 
Do you know how hard it is to get one hole in one in golf? Okay, we're all, some of us are trying to get a hole in one in our dating life, right? You're trying to get a hole in one in golf. Well, she got six of them. Her last words to me on the phone before she knew she would never see me again, maybe in heaven, but that'd be it, was do your best. I don't care if you become a garbage man or the prime minister of Canada, but do your best. Say that word with me, do, do your, your best. best. So what this means is that the happiness is found in engagement. Happiness is not found sitting at home, staring at a television, being disengaged. The diesel guy who just didn't come out with any other genes, didn't find a solution, that guy thought he was happier by not engaging. In fact, happiness comes from engaging. Even when I was joking with you guys before to stand up, and some guys stood up, some didn't, the guys who stood up were happier. The guys who stood up were like standing up. The guys that were sitting were like, <laughs> you're happier when you take action. The engagement is the reward. Why is it that I took every penny that I made, for the most part, out of RSD, millions and millions of dollars, and I just pummeled it back into RSD? The joy was the engagement. The pay was to work. It was a privilege to work. It was a privilege to teach infield training. It was a privilege to do seminar. It was a privilege to release free videos. The privilege is to contribute. That's the gift. You should always love yourself and take care of yourself. Go to the spa. Go eat a nice meal. Go be intimate with someone and have fun. Go laugh with your friends. Go to a movie. Go do all that stuff. But it's a reversal of what most people think it is. That's to recharge you to engage. When you don't commit to producing results in life, what winds up happening is you become disengaged and you become unhappy. You become miserable and you go into a derp state. Okay? Say, dodge the derp state. Dodge the derp state. Right. So that being the case, results orientation. And we come to you and we say, we want you to focus on inner work. We want you to focus on letting go of, sometimes we call it low vibration energy as a spiritual jargon. Sometimes we call it trauma. We say to you, clean up what's in here. Why do we do that when we're so results oriented? Here's why. Drew and I, we taught dating advice for many years. And one of the things that we had to do in dating advice was to look beneath the surface of what's going on with the opposite sex. We had to understand that. We had to look deep past the surface layer. Well, the same way to coach clients, we had to go deep past the surface layer. And here's what we saw. Number one, many clients don't have their lives together enough to even go out of the house at night to go socialize and work on social skills. Number two, when they go out to socialize, they're terrified to go talk to anybody, petrified. Or if they do and it doesn't go well, they go crazy negative into a spiral of negativity and look for other negative people to complain about how it could never work for them. And number three, what we saw was that in the interactions themselves, people were acting very weird. They're unhappy, they're stifled. And if, it, and if they date someone and it doesn't go well, they get super traumatized. And Julian's watching this and Julian is seeing guys are struggling. And he spent many years trying to give them methods and ideas for how to work on their social skills. And these are working, but he wants to take it to another level. This is not getting rid of those or wiping to them aside. It's not either or. Say the word, it's not either or. <laughs> Have you guys ever noticed that some people think it's either all a method or all inner work? Have you guys ever seen that? Yeah. We've never understood that. It's always great to work on all areas. The, the, you know, Jeff coming up here showing how to use your voice is important. Julian showing how to do inner work is important, but here's what's interesting. When you've done your inner work, it gets a lot easier to use your voice. It all gets easier. What most of you guys are doing is you're trying to be results oriented, I hope, but you're like a car driving that isn't aerodynamic. There's parachutes on the side of the freaking car. You're being slowed down. You're walking with a backpack. It's like you're trying to swim, but you're holding down a, a beach ball under the water and it's always about to pop up. And then that heavy energy that you're carrying is making you distracted. I would ask you, health, wealth, relationship, higher purpose. How much do you really even focus or get locked in? How much of your day do you spend trying to numb yourself? How much of your day do you spend in distraction? How much success barrier do you experience where you do what I like to call majoring in minor things? People will sit there gossiping about people that crap talk them or some way that they were violated or victimized, or they'll sit there looping on areas where they're just self-soothing by playing victim. 
They'll sit there watching television that's not educating them. They'll put foods in their body that makes them sick, physically sick. They'll loop on thoughts that are making them unhappy. They, they work jobs that they hate, that aren't going anywhere, that aren't cultivating skills. They lack self-respect or boundaries. They don't expect a proper exchange of financial compensation for their time. They feel their time is worth $10 an hour, $20 an hour, because inside that's how you feel. And then they think, I wanna be results oriented. They're driving around with parachutes out the back of the car. And then they're pushing down the gas pedal as hard as they can, and they can't seem to get any momentum. And then they're driving so hard that what's happening is now they need to take a bigger break. They need more time off because of the fact that they're so stressed at work. They're over revving the car. One of the greatest questions you can ever ask yourself is, how do I make this easier? See, I have friends that say I'm results oriented, but they never laugh. They never joke around. I'm making this a more serious speech to reach people like that. Because I find if I joke around, they tune out. So I'm going into that world with you here. They say that they're about being results oriented, but they're not laughing. First of all, let's look at the fact that what's the point of doing all this if you can't be happy? I guess there's some point, but that would kind of make you a sociopath. People that are sociopathic, they, they just want a result because they, they can't be happy either way, but if they just kind of logically know they got a result, that's the closest thing they get to happiness. And then they often still, because the emotion part of their mind is dead, but they still have access to their hormones apparently. That's what I read, I don't know if it's true. They still have access to their hormones so they can still feel rage, the rage of their hormone Whoa. and rage, jealousy, and anger, but they can't feel happiness. So they, they just try to like get one over on everybody and win. They're in a very competitive frame. They call that winning. But what is winning if we can't win together? When I go create all the content, when Julian goes and creates all the content, our team does, that's so that we can win as a team. I don't want to just beat you all. I want us to go up together as a team. That's what gives it meaning and context. Me sitting alone at the top of a little castle, all alone quiet, is weird. Funny enough, I basically live in a castle in the Hollywood Hills. And sometimes no one's there. And I sit there overlooking the city in my mini castle, and I'm like, pretty cool. <laughs> well, here I am. Just me in the view. How's it going, Mr. House? Oh, I'm fine. It freaks me out, man. Okay? I don't want to just win with myself. I want to win together. Why do I love to have children? Why do I want to have a team? I want my team to win. I want you guys to win. I want my tribe to win. I want the world to win. I want to spread positivity. So what does winning even mean at that point? Is it shoving somebody down so you can win? Even when people have gone after me, I've never, I don't think I've really ever gone back after them to be honest with you, not in years. Because I did that as a kid. It sucks the life out of you. You can see the life being sucked out of somebody when you look in their pupil. Look them dead in the pupil. Look at the bags under their eyes. Look at the aging in their face. Look, anytime that you're watching somebody online who's in that mode, press pause and look at their face. And you'll see these demonic looking like faces. You'll see it. Now, to be fair, I'm trying to go into that reality with you right now. So if we pause on me, I may well look like that. Like, you know, I, okay? Because we're going into that world with you. You know, so we like to just joke around and have fun most of the time. But occasionally I want to go into that world with you. I want to go into that harder world because when I show it to you easy, you're not going to get it. So I want to begin this by going into that difficult world with you. And I want you to consider how you're making your life difficult. You're making it harder. Okay, so we're sitting here as guys who've done millions in sales. We've been pioneers in different areas. We've tested things and we could have done way better. I look at what we could have done and I'm like, we could have done better. But you know what? We did the best that we could, just like you did the best that you could. I've made mistakes. Julian's made tremendous mistakes as have I. I'm not proud of everything I've done. There's things I'm embarrassed of what I've done. But you know what's cool about that? I can talk about it freely. Maybe I'll do more videos on that topic. I can talk about it. I can learn from it. I can teach it and I can continue on my journey, and I can own the mistakes. So, again, if we say that we're results oriented, why are we wanting to remove trauma around the areas of health, wealth, relationship, or higher purpose, is we want the car to drive. What happens when you have, the, here's the deal, okay? This is the, the key of what I'm gonna say here, so pay attention to this. What happens when you have the parachutes on, you are unaware that the parachutes are there. So again, go quiet for a moment, 
Listen to what you can hear. Go quiet. How loud is that air conditioning? Pretty loud. Pretty loud. But again, when you don't focus on it because you're so locked in, what happens is you don't even know that that sound is there. Right now, I'm yelling over a sound. How much better would it be if we could shut that thing the fuck off? Right? But it's all good, right? Well, we want air conditioning, so we're going to go with it. But what if that's emotional trauma? What if that means that you can't read a book for more than five or ten minutes without getting distracted because you're carrying low vibration energy? What if that means that when you're talking to your boss at work, you flip out on him or you send a nasty company-wide email? What does it mean when you're an entrepreneur and you start fighting with the people who you work with trying to win and then wind up exploding everything that you do and humiliating yourself and all the people that you work with? What result does that have? What result does it have when you're stressing so much that you're eating food that poisons you and that makes you sick and you need to eat that food in order to get through the day? How much of our music is oriented around drugs and alcohol? How many people are consuming inappropriate amounts of drugs and alcohol to get through the day? They go, get crunk, get crunk. All that I hear is, I'm traumatized, I'm traumatized. <laughs> I'm not, I don't think they're cool. I'm not like that person's cool and crunk. I mean, maybe a bit, <laughs> but you know, for the most part, I don't think they're cool. I'm like, you're traumatized. That's all good. You're making the best. I don't, you're, you're, you're a survivor. You're like, when I see like some get crunk person, I'm like, that's a beautiful survivor. They don't know that they're carrying trauma, but they're trying their best to get through the day. And they're trying to make light of the circumstance they're in. So when you have those parachutes behind you, you make everything harder. Have you ever seen it where guys try to learn socializing? And because they're carrying a lot of negative energy, they need a million different methods to get through a social interaction. Because when you're in a negative mood, you need a whole arsenal of things to hold people there while your negative energy, your toxic energy infects them. If you're toxic energetically, you're gonna need a lot of little gambits and, and gimmicks to hold someone there to talk to you. That's what a lot of those old social skill teaching stuff was all about. Because people assumed, here's the key to it, everybody assumed that they couldn't let go of their negative energy. They thought, that's just how it is. You can't fix this. And why would you want to fix it? Because that rage and darkness drives you to results. That makes you want to get results. That, that competitiveness makes you want to get results. You're stuck in a paradigm. You're on loop in a freaking paradigm and you can't get out of it. So what Julian's been teaching in Transformation Mastery is how to elevate out of that to where you'll still be results oriented, but here's the key. Number one, when you're in that mode, you don't even know what results you want. You don't even know what results you want. Have you guys ever heard us talk about the competitive versus collaborative frame? Yeah. A lot of guys, when they're in that competitive frame, they even start getting competitive against their own friends. Is that the result you want, to hurt your friends? You know, your comp look at business, they're always like my competitor. You know when I talk about, when I talk business to people, I always have to say like, talk about competitors because if I don't, I can't even communicate with most other entrepreneurs. They won't even hear me. I have to talk about revenue and competitors. I have to do it. Or they don't even take me seriously in a conversation. They can't even speak that language. They can't envision that I would want to spread information everywhere and if other people want to teach it, that we're excited about that. And if somebody else started being, making more money than we are, we'd be excited about that. But they can't envision that. Many people will, like, you know, me and Julian get crap talk a lot on the internet, and we never respond. Many people, they actually believe that the reason we don't respond is because we would have nothing back to, you know, to say, a positive to that. They don't realize that we just want to see people win, and the more that we don't focus on the bullshit and we focus on our product, the more that our sales go up anyway. Imagine that, you start getting in an argument with somebody online versus just let it go and put that time in your product. What do you guys want to hear more? Do you guys want to hear us arguing online or do you want us to work on our product quality? What do you want? Product. Is there anybody that just wants us to argue that online? A little drama today. Could be kind of fun? I, get, I don't blame you. You know what, it actually could be fun, but in the end, we just look like really stupid and, what, and, and it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. So we've always str strove to take the high road. Maybe someday we won't. Maybe, there, you know, there's an exception to every rule. So maybe someday we wouldn't. But we've all, like, whenever we see weird stuff, we're like, that is so weird. Wow. Anyway, back on product quality. We take the energy. You know when someone disses you, you get energized by it, you kind of feel this energy? Yeah. What if you took that and you put it right back into your product quality or your work? What would happen to you? 
And we've done that for years and years and years with the desire to be the best teachers we could be. So that's what results oriented means. It means that when you make a mission, for us it was to get really good in the social skills stuff, to get good as teachers, to get good as releasing free videos, to finding, bu to finding budgets to run free events. Do you know how hard it is even just to budget free events all over the world, to budget that, to budget free videos, to budget teams of editors? It's challenging to, but to, to be a teacher and a teacher of teachers. Julian has taught many teachers. It is so hard, but you know what? We love it. It's fun, the challenge is fun, but to go to that level within the results-oriented competition mentality, what happened, because we were like that at one point, but we hit walls. We couldn't get past the barrier. See, what happens in life is that the higher the degree of success, it's like you're going through these thinner, it's like you're going through the eye of a needle at a certain point. You have to be so locked in and focused to get to that elite level result. Who here's read the book Relentless? To be what Timothy S. Grover calls a cleaner, your behavior has to become so focused, so laser focused, that there's no dead weight. You've got to let go of the dead weight. How much dead weight do you think you're carrying right now? How much of your day is really focused on the following things? One, being productive. That's amazing. Productive. Say that word, productive. productive. Okay. Number two, recharging yourself. Say that word. Recharging yourself. Three, educating yourself. Educating. Four, enjoying life. Why is that last one, enjoying life, so key? Well, what are we doing this for? Are we psychos that just wants to see a number go up? Are we psycho? Number went up. I, I, don't, I can't feel any happiness, but when a number goes up, I can process that. That's called a sociopath. You guys should read about it. Read the sociopath next door. You can learn about people who have no empathy, their complete logic, and because they can't feel happiness, they only feel rage from their hormones, they want to see a number go up. That's all they can experience. You've got to also be happy. When I look at somebody, the degree to which they're laughing is also equally important to me as how much money they made or how much success they had in their given endeavor. I would rather be somebody smiling and laughing, maybe living on a beach surfing all day, than some miserable guy in Manhattan smashing out the stock market, making money, and ready to die of a heart attack at 52. Give me the surfing guy any day of the week. But you want to know something? A lot of people, again, like the inner game, outer game thing, they make this false dichotomy. There's a false dichotomy between the two. You can enjoy life while being productive. That doesn't mean you're not gonna have a rough moment. I've had rough moments, Who has rough moments. We get upset or triggered, sure. But how much can that be minimized? Can we minimize that from a common default to a rare occurrence? Apathy, if you study spiritual growth, is one of the lowest vibrations. A lot of drugs that you can take put you into apathy. People think that means happiness. You're actually going below your emotions. You're going below consciousness. Then what you have is guys that are so results oriented, they're just locked in. Have you ever read the book Spiral Dynamics? No, I've not. Okay, Spiral Dynamics, it explains, we go through different paradigms. Some people get caught in coping paradigms. A lot of people in entrepreneur will get caught in what's called the orange part of Spiral Dynamics, which means you're just all about results. Then they go into the green phase, which is where they're focused about being kind of like more socialist and everybody can be happy. But of course, you guys are here in San Francisco. What happens when we try to make everybody happy? Certain challenges, right? You're probably aware. But then from there you go into yellow and that's where you can find a middle ground of producing results, but also being happy and sharing it around. There's a middle ground. You've got to look out for yourself and your temple, but you've also got to bring everybody else up to be optimally evolved. I will have a work day and it's grueling. I mean, first of all, at the end of a work day, if you're, if you're not like looking like, oh, like in your brain, like you know when you do a workout in the gym that's really crazy and you have to stumble out? A typical work day for me, six days a week, at the end of the day, my brain looks like me if I did way too many squats because I had an aggressive trainer that wanted to prove what a good trainer they are. You guys ever got the trainer that wants to show how important they are? They kill you. That's me after a work day in my brain. So. If that's the, and, and there's people, look, there's people way smarter than me get more results than me. I'm just giving my own experience at the level that I'm at. So what you have is at the end of the day, you wanna be tired, but that said, you wanna also every day be getting stronger. You want to be able to lock in more every single day. So you could be more productive, but also here's the key. You wanna to learn to enjoy the menial tasks. If I'm having to work on a video edit, if I'm working on finances, if I'm working on infrastructure, if I'm teaching a program, whatever it is, if we're out shooting, I'm cracking jokes all the time. I'm joking, I'm laughing. I'm saying, let's go eat at the best restaurant after we shoot the video. I'm always pumping my state and making it fun. And I'm aware of trauma that I'm carrying and I'm learning to let it go. Again, I'm not perfect with this. I have my, I have my spots where I get really upset. But for the most part, I've gone from this to this to like that. It has gone so far down. 
So I've been kind of aggressive in my talk here because I think that there's a lot of guys, A, that suffer from apathy and need to hear that because their first step is to wake up and get a little more aggressive in the results. But even beyond that, I think there's a lot of guys in results where if we joke around to make a lighter seminar, they can't connect to that type of energy. And they get the impression that Julie and I are just kind of like fluttering around and like somehow waiting to manifest success. When him and I actually have a lot of resentment towards people that are what we call, they have discombobulated positive energy. Like they're very positive, but it's untethered. Say the word untethered. untethered. Say the word discombobulated. discombobulated. So somebody, it's like they're kind of floating above the, the trauma, right? I'm positive, I'm manifesting, I'm po Like I love the movie The Secret, I think it's awesome, but you know what? A lot of people that read it, they take it the wrong way. And they're sort of floating above the trauma. That is what you call fake positivity. It's what you call Kim Kardashian spirituality. When I see people floating above the bullshit and unwilling to see it as it is, to me, they are lying. You have to see the world as it is, okay? One of the things they say in the book, Built to Last, is a great leader's job is to look at that beautiful parquet, like all those uh, tiles outside your house, you know, like all, the, all the, uh, the patio tiles, patio stones, and to pull them up and to look at the slugs underneath. In my mind, most people who do Kim Kardashian spirituality, they just want to look at that beautiful little patio. They're like, it's beautiful, all the world is light, all the world is light. And I'm like, you're lying. You're gonna freak out the first little thing that happens. You, you are not grounded in your presence. You are not grounded in non-resistance. You are not grounded in non-dual awareness. You are making a lie and a fairy tale in order to see the world as better than it is. To me, somebody who's spiritually grounded can look at those slugs and say, you know what? That is a part of God or the universe or whatever you want to call it. Whatever it is to you, do not get hung up on loaded language. But you can look at that and you can see it in that way. You can see the beauty in it. You can see the cycles of life. You can see the larger aspect of life. You can look at the fact that in the ocean, all the fish are eating each other. Look at it in the jungle, all these animals are killing each other. Even cute little plants have roots that attack the roots of the other plants. Human beings can be quite nasty. We're aware of that. But can we create a space within ourselves that is protected from that? Can we create a space within ourselves that is happy, joyous, and free even amidst seeing the world as it is? Can we understand that everybody's at their own level? Can we understand that that jerk at the store is at his own level, is maybe carrying a lot of trauma, carrying a lot of low vibration energy, and see him as ourselves and do what we can to lighten his day and in the process, lighten our own day? Can we lighten someone else's day to lighten our own day? And then can we take that energy and feed off of it to do better work, to be better at dating, to be better in a relationship, to be happier, to be productive, to be fruitful, to be more aligned to our core purpose. Yeah. So that to me, that is real spiritual growth. It's about results, say it. It's about okay? Results. okay, and becoming process oriented achieves the results. Say, say focus on process, focus on process. Gets, the result. gets the result. So when we're saying be fully immersed in that process, like with each word that I speak with you as a speaker, I have to be merged into the word. I have to cross my T's, dot my I's. I have to flesh out my points to you, use my voice effectively to reach you, connect to you. With each moment, I have to be immersed in that. If I'm trying to push through it, try to get to the end, yeah, I'm results oriented. I'm trying to get to the end of it, but I don't actually get the result. I'm chasing the result, I lose the result. It's like you put a butterfly in your hand. If you're a results oriented person, you want the butterfly, you go, ah, ah, ah. You just squish, maybe you squish it, you squish it, or you scare it off. Results are intended to be to enjoy that process and move with it. So we have to be aware if we're truly results oriented is, and this is what I find so funny, when I hear people saying they're results oriented, are they really results oriented or are they saying that as sort of a self, as sort of this ego trip where they're not really getting the best results, probably lying to themselves about the results that they're getting to justify the negativity that they're stuck in and essentially living in that paradigm where they have the parachutes on the back of the race car they're, and they're coming up with all these methods to deal with the parachute on the back of the race car to cope the way through the day. And because they're trying so hard, they think they're focused on the results. But sometimes in life to get a result, like let's say you want to bake a cake. If you I'm about baking this cake, yo. <laughs> you like that? Okay, shake so, okay, okay. Shake I'm about to shake and bake cake and I'm baking this cake, right? And then you just take a bunch of cacao powder, you throw it in the thing and throw it in the oven you look at it later, you got a bunch of burnt cacao powder. That's chocolate powder for any non-nutritioners. So like, okay, well, it didn't work. You didn't bake the cake. 
If you're about results, get into the process of baking the cake. Put in the right ingredients. With each ingredient, give love to it. But if I say to you, give love to each ingredient, well, that's not about the cake. It's like, no, 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 no. We're going to make a world-class cake. We're not going to make some burnt Frankenstein-esque cake <laughs> and then eat it in pain and rationalize that it's good and never smile or laugh. We're going to make the best cake. We're going to enjoy making the cake. And then from there, we're going to enjoy eating the cake and then we're gonna share the cake. That's the kind of result that you're looking for. Not, you, want the, you don't want the wrong result, you want the right result. You want the result where everybody's having fun and you have more energy. You're energized in giving, they're energized in receiving, and, and we can share. What is it that makes human beings amazing? Synergy between people, that's the biggest thing. So that's why Julian focuses on that. Julian is one of the most results-oriented guys I've ever met in my life. But rather than just jamming a bunch of cacao and burning it and rationalizing it's is good, he wants to enjoy the process of making it, make the best cake, and have fun eating it. It's just a different type of result. Mm. Yeah, I hate this binary type thinking, where it's like, it's this or that. And your question implied it a bit. It's like, I'm either results or I'm chilling, right. or I'm content. Why not both? Right. No, I just you know? struggle with it, you know? On one side, as you said, you have the golem guy. For real, that's the person who's like, results, results, and you see it in the eyes. And literally, like you said, pause the video. Anyone who's like, yeah, it's results, just pause and look at that person. And put yourself in their head, like, what are they feeling? Are they smiling ever? Are they there? Are they alive? Or is it this fixation? Results, you need results. What is it? Now on the flip side, what about the little hippy-dippy positive spiritual person? And this is why there's a lot of disgust with the spiritual world. And I personally have a lot of disgust with the spiritual world. Because what's most of it? Hey, just be happy and focus on things. Just fluff. <laughs> and that person's not really there either. Yeah. On one hand, you have the intense golem, like, again, like, like that. On the other hand, it's like, I'm there, happy. What about both? What about this, hey? Not, hey, or hey, but hey. Yeah. Powerful, but present. And you see it in the fucking eyes. Now, for a lot of people, as you said, we're stuck in apathy, we're stuck in frustration. It's a lot easier to connect when you go that route, the Gollum route, because everyone connects with that. It's like, you know what, it's results. Like, you're like, yeah, fucking, it, it rouses you up. They resonate with it. It really, you resonate with it. That's the easy way to sell. And that's why this whole like negative hustle mentality is so popular today, because it resonates with the masses. Preaching something like, be present, bake the best cake. No one wants to bake the best cake. That, I mean, who the fuck resonates with that? We're like, oh, positivity, you, you know, you're enough. Everyone resonates with that. No, people resonate with frustration, anger. Yeah, bitching, gossip, complaint. That's the shit that gets the most views, even if you go on YouTube. For real, right now if I made, you know, the great thing about presence in the title, or a title like, fuck presence and fuck Eckhart Tolle. What do you think would get more views? What do you think would get more views? Fuck Eki. That'd be the title. You know, the lies of Eckhart Tolle. Lies. Exposed. For real. Exposed. Eckhart Tolle exposed. The truth. It'd be my most popular video. And then you'd see me on there like, fuck Eckhart Tolle. Focus on the now. Focus on the now. Fuck that. That would get so many views and people would resonate. They're like, yeah, and they'll go, this it's guy. so real. They, whenever it's negative, they always go, it's so real. Like, because like, that's what they resonate. It's like, it's so real because life fucking sucks. In fact, you know what else is real? Ah! Well, that's the other thing. People despise those who actually get results. The masses despise people who get results. That's why they'd be so happy, like, fuck Eckhart Tolle, he just looks too peaceful, fuck that guy. Any gossip on that person, they're like, yeah. And the person telling me is frustrated like me, yeah. Not as good as I thought. You know? Not as good as everyone thought. It's all shit and real. Got it. You know? And you see it too, it's like, how can you fully immerse yourself in what you're doing? And by the way, just notice here too, I was just sitting here quietly and notice I just turn it on. I don't have to force myself to bring it. It just flows through. And there's a difference between power and force. Here, I'd let it flow through and it's fucking loud and being very modest, it dominates. As opposed to, so, da -da 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 like that. 
And that would have been the old me. You can see it in my old videos. I'm come up on stage and it's very competitive. I'm like, <laughs> like this, very forced. But there's not that power Read behind it. Read the book it. Power Versus Force by David R. Hawkins. You don't need to agree with all of it because many of the most innovative thinkers are, they, they can be a little bit outlandish, but the most innovative thinkers also have the most incredible points. If you can discern mm -hmm. between the stuff that's a little too out there and the stuff that's powerful and the core truths, read books like Levels of Energy by Frederick Dodson or Power Versus Force by David R. Hawkins. Give yourself that gift, they're amazing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's like how can you fully be immersed if there's that air conditioning noise in the back of your head? If there's all that frustration, how can you fully be there? Most people can't even sit still five minutes. I give you one challenge. Try it tonight, try it tomorrow. Sit down in silence, no distractions, nothing, for five minutes. And I can guarantee you, and it sounds harsh, but it's fucking true, 80% of you can't do it. You'll sit there, you're like, I'll do it. Or now you might do it, he's like, I'll prove him wrong. <laughs> but you can't sit in silence. You design your life in a way to always avoid this. You go home, immediately music, TV, phone. You sit silent, all that negative shit starts surfacing. You start noticing that refrigerator hum. There's that little voice like, you piece of shit, you know, this person, fuck that person. <laughs> da, da, da. It's like, it's endless. And you laugh because you know it's and true. And that's your life ticking away a second at a time. Oh, right. No, we all have that little voice. It's like, you piece of shit, you know what you did. You know your parents don't love you. You know you're a horrible person, you know you're toxic. I'm not saying you are, but there's a part of you that fucking believes it. Hey, you remember that horrible thing that happened to you? Remember being shamed? Remember being mocked? Remember being bullied? Remember feeling unloved? You're probably not good enough. If you were, things would be easy. Look at everyone else, how easy it is, but not for you. Look how ugly you look. You're disgusting. You're pathetic. You're a slug. You're scum. Those words, and I see the smiles, you resonate, you're like, yep, that's pretty much, try it, look at yourself in the mirror, see what your fucking voice says. You ugly piece of shit, you deserve to die. And it's so self-indulgent. I had a friend die earlier this week, buddy of mine. I'm sorry. You think he, thanks man, you think he ever knew he was gonna die, that it would just end? And if he had known that, how would his inner dialogue and his day-to-day -day decisions be different? And yet none of us here can guarantee tomorrow, or even the next five minutes. I'm sure we'll all make it, five minutes. But the point is like, we can't guarantee it. Yeah. And look at your dialogue as if you'd live forever. When are you gonna make a decision to make that shift? And what we're talking about here is being a fully, or at least much more evolved adult. Living up to your potential as a grown human, rather than the type of conditioning that you're exposed to in day-to-day -day media influences and consumer culture. Yeah, and living to your potential isn't stuffing this down, it's processing it. If you don't process it, if you're just external, 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 trying to escape it, and that's why it's also so easy to resonate with that external, because you don't have to deal with your inner demons, you're not gonna get very far. I mean, I'm sure you've heard the saying, smart work, right, and hard work. Like, a lot of hard, dumb fucking work. Most people are hard workers, but dumb workers, stupid workers. People who grind their wheels, who fight against self-sabotage, are stupid. They're not results-oriented, they are stupid. It's a rationalization. It's an easy label to place to justify all that hard work. We're like, look at all the work I'm doing. You wanna be a smart worker. All that energy, stuffing this down, coping with who you are, which is truly what it is, coping with yourself, instead of feeling awesome and then thriving from there, that is stupid work. And it's a shame too, because often people who are brilliant, intellectually and logically, can often hold themselves back so much. And sometimes you're too smart for your, when he says stupid, they're too smart for their own good. Many of the friends I've had over the years who self-sabotage the most are the most brilliant people I've met. I'm in awe of their intellect, but they get so smart that they get, they get um, myopic and analytic and they're seeing things too much in the logic of it. And if you even said that to them, they're like, wow, could you go against the logic? Right? And it's like, wait up, you're unhappy. No, right, and then, and also, somebody who's bogged down by that type of energy, they're infected with it. If you show them any path to getting out of it, they zone out, because that energy is parasitic, and therefore the parasite will resist being extracted. So, if you look at, say, Julia and myself, when we talk about this stuff, if we speak with them about it, to, if you're hearing us in a fairly logical manner, their filter of it is like, any bit cakes. Look at a cake, right? And they're looking, they're like, what is wrong with this guy? 
Okay, it's about results. That's what it looks like to them through their filter. They're like, this is terrible what they're saying. It's a filter, okay? To be fair, Julian's now embraced it and dressed in the way that they probably think that, uh, think that we are, <laughs> you know? But it does make sense in that paradigm, and that's the key. In that paradigm where self-sabotage is a thing, where self-hate is a thing, you need techniques to fight against it. So it does make sense. Hey, I'm self-sabotaging. I keep fucking things up. I'm a toxic person. What can I do? All these different techniques. And this is what's pumped into you in the self-help world, in the socializing world, in the spiritual world, even in mainstream. It's all these little techniques in this paradigm. And you can't see that there's another paradigm outside of coping, outside of self-sabotage. You can't imagine that self-sabotage doesn't exist. We never question that. Like, why do I have this to begin with? What about a paradigm where there is no self-sabotage and all that energy I'm spending trying to fight against it, trying to get a result and keep the result, like why isn't this natural? You could be spending it towards thriving even more. And there's so much investment in the current paradigm and that's why we tend to block it off. Um, one of the best ways to, I mean, illustrate this is, you imagine right now we're in San Francisco, we are. I give you a map of LA. <laughs> Say right now you're in San Francisco, I'm like, here's a map of LA, Go find your way around LA, uh, San Francisco. Are you gonna find your way around? No. But what if this guy decides to fucking hustle? Decides to look up techniques to read the map better? Gets the right mindsets? Uses that anger of frustration of not finding his way around as even more fuel? Is he gonna find his way around? No. Now imagine he's been doing this his entire life. From the moment you're born, I'm like, here's the map of LA, find your way around. And you're going around, you're trying everything. How old are you? 25 years of your life trying to find your way around San Francisco using this damn map of LA. And I come up to you and I'm like, dude, I know you're putting in a lot of work, but it's stupid work. It's dumb work. And you're all frustrated, you're like, oh, but, the, but the hustle, find a way. I'm like, it's the wrong map. There's another map. There's another <laughs> paradigm outside of this where it's easy. Here's the map of San Francisco. It's the wrong map. Is he just going to be like, okay. No, because that means you've been fucking up your entire life. You're digging down a tunnel, and to realize that the tunnel was actually over there, you'd have to rationalize all that work that you did to dig down the wrong tunnel. Y you can't just hop over to the other tunnel. You've got to walk all the way back up that tunnel, locate the location where we should begin digging the other tunnel, and then begin digging and doing that work again. But as a 25-year-old young man, we sit up here looking at you and seeing your potential, and we want to see you maximize your potential. Because we can see the future of your life, not by being a psychic, but by common sense based on what we've seen over the years. I don't know exactly what your life will be, but I can look in your pupil and take a lot of guesses. And that would probably freak you the fuck out. <laughs> but, you know, I've had many, many years, I'm 39, I've had many years to see the direction that people are gonna go. Um, you know, they say that if you sit by the river long enough, the dead bodies of your enemies will go floating by. And it's really true. You, it, over time, you get to see how far people made it, stumbled, and had to quit, and burned out, ran out. You're looking for that, you wanna play that long game. Six, there's a book called Hannibal and Me, and the idea of the book is that you can have what's called, a, I think he calls it a pirate victory. The idea that you can win in the short term, but it's actually harming you in the long term. It's not a long term win. So the, the example of Hannibal and me is that Hannibal was the first general that ever invaded Rome. And, or, or that was successfully uh, took on Rome, I think, or something to that effect. And so he had to go through a, the back of a mountain in order to invade Italy. And it was, it was considered impossible. But Hannibal actually managed to go all the way back through the mountains and invade Italy from the side where they, they didn't have protection because no one believed they could make it through the mountain. And he terrorized Italy for decades, viewed as the most successful general. Well, what happened was eventually there was this general called Fabian Maximus. And what he realized was that instead of ha attacking Hannibal dead on, just let him win for a little while. Their soldiers start to get fat, they'll get a bunch of Roman wives, they'll get lazy, and then in 20 years, just go kill them all. And what happened was after, you know, and, and, his, and his people were mad at him, but eventually, by letting them kind of win for a bit, he went, took them on. Later, I think it was Scipio, he went into Carthage. Have you guys ever even heard of Carthage? My understanding is Carthage was around similarly successful as Rome, or maybe in the same kind of ballpark to whatever extent. I'm not clear on that, but that's the idea of it. So from there, Scipio, I think that was, I read this years ago, he went in, and he just, was it Scipio? Was that it? Who knows? Who knows? Who cares? Okay, Scipio. And so he goes in there and he just destroys Carthage, wipes it off the map. So Hannibal won in the short term, good for ego. Long term, his victory resulted in his com the complete annihilation of his entire culture. 
How many victories do you get where you're going down a tunnel of trauma energy, low vibration energy, digging down that tunnel, thinking that you're winning, only later to have it explode in your face? How many people die young from human caused illnesses? How many people never reach their potential in work? How many people go through life unhappy the whole way through, complaining, waiting for that magical time when it's all gonna be okay, not traveling to the places that they wanna travel to, not doing the type of professional work and creating the type of impact creatively that they wanna create, and this has become the norm. This is the norm in society. And this is something that Julian has been working nonstop to try to make an impact on because not only do we want to get you out of the wrong tunnel, but we want to show you where the right tunnel is or at least give you tools to decide where your own right tunnel is really. And then from there, get you driving that race car without the parachutes on it. That's why he's so hammering all the time on this type of work. Yeah, and it allows you to enjoy that result. Remember this, if you're not enjoying the results, those are not results. For real, if you're not enjoying those results, those are not results. What are you chasing? More discontent. For real. And that's probably your journey to this day. That for sure as hell was mine up until that scandal. Just look at all the things you probably got right now through a lot of effort, fighting self-sabotage, and you're still trying to hang on to maintain where you thought it would work, but it didn't. No? I thought that when a, a, per, a girl would smile at me, things would change. Did it? No. Now you're chasing the next thing. For real. Just think about it. Like, what am I doing? Like, what is your life? Just chasing all this shit that doesn't work. It's like playing whack-a-mole. Just uh, 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 like a zombie. You're literally a zombie chasing shit, and you refuse to stop and audit your life and what you've been doing and taking the harsh truth where it's like, I'm chasing fucking phantoms. What am I doing? Am I a mindless drone? And you can see it so easily in others, can't you? Mm. How obvious is it in other people? How obvious? Pretty obvious? Pretty obvious. What do you think? Clear as day. But what about yourself? Can you see it in yourself? You're too close to it. It's like you're your own lawyer. Yeah. You're fighting your own case. You're like, I didn't do it! <laughs> <laughs> and look at your friends, by the way. Friends who you try to introduce to this. All the resistance. This is that next level. If right now you're like, uh, what? You are your friends resisting what you know. What's the alternative? Facing your demons and clearing up all that shit. And getting aligned to your core purpose and moving through it with power, not force. Because here's the difference too. I remember growing up, I was always into music. I always played music and I remember I got this program on my computer called Pro Tools. And you might've heard me talk about this. I had Pro Tools and I was like, this is amazing and I spent hours, days, weeks trying to figure out this fucking recording program and just messing around with my guitar and it was like a lot of work, even a lot of frustration, but it felt fucking effortless because it was authentic to me and I was like inspired to do it. Then you could give me a five, ten minutes, I don't know, like chemistry assignment for school. Fuck that. It felt so heavy and draining and that's the difference. Clear the baggage, instead of feeling heavy and draining, you're doing way more work, harder work, but it doesn't feel that way. It just flows, just like me with fucking Pro Tools. And you enjoy every step of the way. Okay. You know, and look again at someone's face. Pause the video. Did that person get the right results or the wrong results? Chasing phantoms, hating yourself more and more, doubling down. As you said, you're doubling down like poker, man. If I, right now I'm like, bet all your money on this. You're like, fuck no. But if I baby step you, and you've been baby stepped your entire life here in this paradigm of scarcity, like, hey, a little more. Invest a little more in the map. Put two more dollars. You already put two. Put two more. Hey, you've already put half your, your money. Why not just go all in? You don't want to give that up, right? We're hooked. We've become the fucking map. I mean, for me, it took a scandal to let go of this map. Before that, I was the most anti-inner work person there was. You would have come up like, hey, past trauma. I'm like, fuck that shit. I'm not one of those little hippy dippy losers who's like, eh, like that. And I was so stubborn and looking back now, so stupid. I was doing a lot of work, hard work, but stupid work. This shit is what gets the results. Yeah, this has been a challenge for me even with our instructor team where I had a big head start and built myself up and I hit walls due to the book, The Game by Neil Strauss. And that gave me a sort of awakening period. Um, 
that was truly incredible. There was a book, if you haven't read it, where I just got my ass reamed out for like about 200 pages. And that was at about age 25. So it was incredibly shocking. And you know, I didn't talk about it for you. I actually never even brought it up for many years. Um, but I very much appreciate going through that experience because it allowed me to get aware of certain things. Well, as other guys on my team have grown, it's been, of course, a great challenge because when you have all these fans, hundreds of thousands of dollars or even getting into millions of dollars and walking around with everybody cheering you on, these are very much a cocktail for ego, which can cause somebody to go further down that path. And it's unfortunate because as I went through that, not everybody gets to have that wake up experience, right? Wake the fuck up, the alarm clock goes off and you get lulled deeper into it. And it's really sad actually to see that, but I used to pray every day that Julian would have an experience like that. Well, my prayers were answered. And um, you know, so, so it was, you know, and look, we're still on our journey. We both have a long way to go ourselves, but we have a lot of knowledge to share. And we've been privileged both to experience it in our own life, but also, being around very, very high level people, okay? People in the billion dollar range, or people that are among the happiest people in the world, or people that are among the most accomplished in the world. And we've got to be around them and seeing a lot of the commonalities that many of them have. And I think there's exceptions to every rule. But what I really look for is I say to myself, would I want to trade lives with this person, not just how much money do they have? You see that? Say, ask yourself, would I want to trade lives with this person? Would I want to trade lives with this person? Or how about this? Would I want to trade emotions with this person? Okay. So when he says freeze, you know, pause a video and look at who you're learning from and you look in their face, if you see that that person is carrying a lot of low vibration energy and they have that kind of demonic look, well, what has lulled them down that path and what energy are they feeding off of? Now, in this video, I actually think that Probably Julian shouldn't mention that because I think in this video we look a little bit like that, and the reason why is because we both we just we talked about this a little bit before we you went in here. Bags into your eyes. Yeah, but you know, but we really wanted to. We wanted. We know that a lot of you in this room are in that space. So rather than us kind of floating above that space and maybe being a bit unrelatable, we wanted to sort of engage with you at that level. Okay. Do you guys feel like we engage with you at some of that yeah. level? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So. The main goal here is that, you know, that said, what you'll see in a lot when we're hanging out, a lot of jokes, laughter, there's a commitment. Here's the key. There's a commitment to enjoying the moment as fleeting and valuable. Say the word commitment, commitment. to enjoy the moment, to enjoy the moment. As, fleeting as fleeting and valuable. Uh, Anytime that someone does a meeting with me or engages with me in a way where it's too heavy, I view it that I am being robbed because I don't know that that could not be my last minute on this earth. Now, if we're going to get really real and serious here and talk about major progress and talk about results, I'm cool to go there. But generally speaking in my life, if I have a partner, I want her to be bubbly and fun. When I work with people, I want them to enjoy the process with me. I don't care how much money I'm making with them. If I don't care if it's a gazillion dollars, if I'm being drained, that's not why I'm alive. Because like my friend, John James, who got killed, I could wind up dead too. And then I spent the last part of my life just fighting to get to that point in misery. So every moment's valuable. Time is the one thing that you can't get back. What are you waiting for? Why are you waiting to start living your life? Why are you waiting to wake up? What sign are you looking for? How do you believe it will be any different when you are training your synaptic pathways to say, I'll be happy when? I'll be happy when? When this happens, I'll be happy. See, I hit that point. Eckhart Tolle, one of my favorite authors, he says, there's two things that make us unhappy. Not getting what we want getting what and we getting want. what we want. Because when you're not getting what you want, you can project in the future you have hope. In my case, I remember I was living in Hawaii, at a beautiful bed on the balcony, fucking hot girl every day, going to five-star dinners every day, paying myself great money, overlooking the ocean, and I still felt exactly the same as I did before I had that. I would literally be bodyboarding a wave in, in Hawaii, paradise, okay? Paradise on earth, go if you haven't been. Paradise on earth. And get out of Waikiki for God's sake, okay? <laughs> Waikiki's great, get out of it, go hike the Nepali coast. You wanna see paradise on earth al while alive? You wanna go to heaven while alive? Go to Nepali coast, go hike it. You need a permit to hike it, we could try to get past the perm up to you, and you probably do it, but either way. So what you have, okay, it's the side of Kauai, the oldest Hawaiian island. So what you have is I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there bodyboarding in, knowing that I've got piles of money, sex, living on the beach. 
I mean, they made a drink out of my life, Sex on the Beach, right? You know, like, <laughs> right? Five-star dinner, traveling the world, going to Europe, Greece, Italy, all this stuff, South America. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you right now, I felt exactly the same. Not only did I feel the same, but then I took that mentality and coached many of my friends to achieve that same life. I spent years working with them to help them work on their speaking, their brand, their content, give them all this stuff. I got them to that point, and I observed them doing the same thing as me. I had to say, poison seed, poisoned fruit. Is that it, the fruit, whatever the fuck it was. No. Okay, the tree, poison seed, poison fruit, whatever the fuck. We'll go with that. So, <laughs> and I had to watch that and admit that to myself. So even be aware, how are you going to affect your children? How is your mentality going to affect your son or your daughter or your loved ones? And you've got to be looking at that too. And I had to do a lot of hard looking at myself and how I was doing that. And continue to iterate, iterate and iterate. Say the word iterate. iterate. I have to iterate. I've got to look at the software running my mind and update it. How often do people update the software in their mind? What do you think? Never. So rare. Rather, they're looking for diversion to medicate themselves, and so on and so forth. And we saw this because we're, when we're teaching dating advice, we're watching guys think that that's gonna fix it. Now, it doesn't take anything away from dating. I love the dating advice, so does he, so passionate. It doesn't take away from the importance of it. We still love it, we'll always love it. Of course we love it, we're the pioneers of it. That said, we could also see what path are we leading people down. So we wanna iterate ourselves. We wanna show the things we know. So that was why there's such an emphasis on upgrading the software here for you. I would even say upgrading, I'd say getting rid of the virus that's in there right now. Right now you have a virus on the computer that's your mind and you're trying to install these new programs, all these new techniques. It's not going to work until you let go of that fucking virus. You have the wrong map, burn the map. And going back to those results too, if you need misery and pain to feel motivated, frustration to feel motivated, what kind of life is that? People double down on their frustration. They will find ways to get more pissed off. That's why a lot of people even procrastinate, because then there's more and more stress till you finally take action. That's all you know. You're gonna be spending your entire life frustrated. If that's life, if that's motivation, I'd rather, like, what the fuck is that? Just being frustrated and doubling down on the frustration, eating you up inside? Insane. Okay, and also when it comes to transformation, and this is big, it has to be who you are. That's how it's permanent. What we do is we try to get some results, fighting all this self-sabotage, and as soon as we get the results, we're doing whatever we can to hang on to those results. Look at how many people actually say get into a relationship and then lose it. Get money, lose it. Get success, lose it. If you can't keep results, those are not real results. And if it doesn't come from who you are, that's not permanent. My favorite example is say, you know, you wanna go out, let's just say socializing, and this is why Again, if you don't bring this deeper layer into the mix, it's completely irresponsible. Teaching advice where it's like going out and just desensitize yourself and that's it. Desensitize yourself to social pressure. You ever hear that? Hey, put yourself in intense situations and you'll get used to it. Will you? Yes. But is it permanent? No. Because what happens when you stop? You revert back. This whole idea of reverting back unless means it's not permanent at all. You've not changed shit. You've just rearranged a bit of the external, but if you stop going out in all those intense situations, you revert back to the old you. You're rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. Yeah. For real. <laughs> this is why even guys will get into relationships with dating advice, even girls. You get that relationship and then you start reverting back and you lose it because it's not permanent. It's not who you are. Permanent, true transformation is subtle and it sneaks up on you. It's the type of change where if you journal day to day, and you look back, say, three months, six months ago, you're like, whoa, that's how I used to think, that's how I used to feel, that's how I used to react to things. It feels like another reality. And right now, the current version of you doesn't require effort to maintain. It seems like it's always been this way. You're surprised when you look back at how you were three to six months ago. And when you, it see, snuck other up when on you see other people, you just feel pity. Yeah, it's not this crazy, like, let me do the thing and whoa, transform. No, it sneaks up and it's like, I thought I was always like this. That's when you know it's permanent because it's part of who you are and you don't need to maintain it. And you see other people relating at that level and you think they're joking. You're like, you're like what? It, oh yeah, that's what it was like too. Yeah. Whoa. Like being triggered. 
I'll break this down. Being triggered is crazy the fact that people don't know about this and assume that their responses to reality are completely normal and try to find techniques around it. Fear of putting yourself out there and expressing yourself, that is not a normal fucking fear. It's not normal. Yes, it's a little bit uncomfortable putting yourself out there, but it's not life or death freak out. We have that. It's like, hey, go speak up, say in public. Say just the idea right now. Say I told you, go out in the street tomorrow during the day by yourself and for five minutes, as loud as you can, start singing a song or start screaming out some things, your, your favorite movie and have people stare at you. You're gonna, free, you're gonna be like, <gasps> as if you're about to jump off a cliff and die. That is not normal. If you're experiencing that, that is not normal. If you experience a breakup and you're run by that pain 10, 20, 30 years later, that is not normal. You'll see it, people even remarry and they're still hurt over their first wife. Yeah, or rather, sadly, it is normal, but not healthy. It's common. It's not normal, but it's the norm. It's of course you're gonna feel hurt. I mean, there's some grieving process, but it should not run you 10 to 20 years later. That is when you're triggered, or as Eckhart Tolle would call it, a pain body attack. And that comes from your past. It comes from your childhood. And if you don't know how to dig into that and process it, you are screwed. And that, yeah. that, that's why most people as adults wind up getting their foot ground into the dirt by the boot of life. And by 40, they are alive, but in the pupil, they are half dead. Yeah. They are walking in a daze. You exist, but you don't live. You're just drifting through life till death. Do you guys see this in other people easily? Yeah. Put your hand up if you see this in others very easily. Okay, but it's very hard to see in yourself because it's like your own lawyer. That's why we've spent so much time getting help with it ourselves and why we're passionate with teaching it. Because you're being your own lawyer and ah, no, I get it, right? It's not a solution. Yeah. Now, let's just take an example when it comes to putting yourself out there. If you go back to your childhood, and this is key when we talk about trauma, a lot of people are like, well, I don't have trauma. Every single person has trauma. Now, what we do is we think trauma is going to war and getting your leg blown off or being fucking beaten up or attacked or abused. And yes, that is traumatic. But trauma depends on the person, their perception and their experience of what's happening to them. A kid lost in the grocery store for just 30 seconds is traumatic. The same as getting your fucking leg blown off. The exact same. From your perception as a kid, you think life is ending. You know what else is traumatic? Being shamed in school, putting yourself out there, saying the wrong thing and having the teacher shame you and every classmate laugh at you. That is as traumatic as getting your leg blown off. Now here's an adult, you're like, what the fuck? I don't get that. Why else do you think you react scared as shit to put yourself out there? Because guess what, as a kid, your world is the classroom. You're not thinking about other countries and shit. You're like, if I don't fit in this environment, like this is my world, this is my universe. Nothing exists beyond this classroom. If the teacher's shaming me and people are laughing at me, I could get kicked out of the classroom. And if I get kicked out, I die. I can't act in the world. You ever feel that even if, say, people find out in school you like a certain person? Like, oh, he likes that girl. And you feel like you're about to die just because everyone found out. It's like so embarrassing. Like it's, the, it's traumatizing. That stays with you. And it stays with you well into your teenage years, into your adult life. And here you are. Go say hi to that person. Put yourself out there. And that same <gasps> fight or flight survival instinct that you had back then kicks in once more. And just like when you were a kid and you thought you were going to die, and that's why you suppressed or repressed the thing, it kicks in here again and you think you are going to die and you can't do it. And it's not about finding new techniques to fight against it. It's about going back to that and releasing it. And when you release it, you don't get triggered. You don't have approach anxiety. You don't get run 10, 20 years by a breakup. You don't have these disproportionate responses to reality. And shit gets way easier. Once more, you can have approach anxiety, fear of putting yourself out there, and use all the techniques and hustle in the world to fight against it, or just don't have it. However, this is so far outside that paradigm, that map. People are like, that can't be true. It is. There are people operating in that paradigm, at that frequency where they don't have those same blockages yeah, you do. Wait, when you don't realize, because you're so surrounded by people like that, it's not even real that that could exist. Because it's like a pyramid. The base of the pyramid is so big, there's so many people in it, that that becomes the norm, and it pulls down the playing field. So I think 
why we're hammering you with this is we want you to live in a different way that works for you. We want you to be the one in control and to wake you up. Say the word wake up. Wake, wake up. up. Say it again. Wake, wake up. up. Say it again. Wake, wake up. up. Okay, now what we want to do is get you the result you want. Say results oriented. Results oriented. Okay, say let go of the parachute. Let go of the parachute. Okay, not in skydiving, <laughs> but in our analogy we use the car. Now, <laughs> This is that one guy, like, hey. Now, okay. Now, lastly, we say it's about results oriented. It's about, say the word, enjoying the journey. Enjoying the journey. Because ultimately, life is going to be a journey. And say it's about getting the right result. Getting the right result. And say, a result I could enjoy. A result I could enjoy. Say, health, wealth, relationship, higher purpose. Health, health wealth, wealth, relationship, relationship higher purpose. purpose. And I want you to be thinking about these things. I want you guys to audit the people who you see out. Say the word, I'm going to audit people I see out. I'm going to audit people I see out. Okay? Say, I'm going to look in their pupils and get a sense of their energy. I'm going to look in my own pupils and get a sense of my own energy. I'm going to audit my own thoughts. I'm going to audit my behavior. I'm going to release trauma. I'm going to come out of coping and I'm going to move into thriving. Anything is possible. Say that. I hope this woke up something in you. There might be that little voice like, dive into this. And here's what I'll say. You took a chance on self-help. You took a chance, unlike a lot of your friends who are like, oh, what is this shit? Working on yourself? You took a chance on something different. This is the same thing. If there's that, what is this? I don't know about trauma. Take a chance on something different. If what you've been doing has not been getting you the right results, switch it up. Otherwise, you're just stuck like everyone else doing the same things. What's the definition of insanity? Doing the same, same thing, thing over and over. And except, yeah, expecting something different. You're doing the same thing. That's traditional self-help. Hustle, head down, keep going. It'll eventually happen. It won't. If you didn't figure it out this far, switch it up. Don't be so fucking stubborn. Don't be as stubborn as I was, or as he was, in having to go through some kind of scandal to realize this. Right now, just looking back on your life, there's enough to realize you got to switch it up. You got to try something else. And fuck the traditional spirituality, positivity. If you followed my stuff, you know I go hard, I'm intense, and I am about results. That's always what I've been about. I pushed it harder, being very modest, than anyone. And I still do in a smart way. And me pushing this stuff. And once more, inner work is not all peachy either. You're facing your demons. This is a lot scarier than just going out in some uncomfortable situations. You're diving into the shit that's been running you your entire life. You're burning the map. That is so terrifying that people would rather live in misery than go through this and realize that higher paradigm. Get into thriving. That's why I push it. Because this got me more results than anything I've tried before it. If you look at my entire journey, like I've been in this for 12 years, look at the first eight versus the past three and a half, four years. Yeah, I've hustled a lot the first eight, but the change after that, you cannot compare it. In terms, as you said, health, wealth, relationships, much better, and I enjoy it. And I'm alive and I'm there. It's not this deadness inside. And look at my old videos. Look at the deadness in the pupils. I, I'm the first to say it. There's something different. There's a shift. You need that shift too. And we want that shift for you. Yeah, it's ultimately about metrics and being able to metricize. And you should be able to look and audit how much of your day is spent looping on negativity. How much of your day is spent laughing and joyous and free. What kind of results are you able to metricize with that additional freedom, energy, and focus? So audit yourself, metricize it, and keep growing. Look, we believe in you. Sometimes all it takes is for one person to believe in you. It just takes one person to believe in you. We're sitting up here late into the night because we believe in you. Thank you. And you're going to make a change. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Appreciate it.
This is Julian, and welcome to Transformation Master. It was fucking amazing. This was huge for me. This was so, so important. This gave me by far the greatest epiphanies I've ever had. It just made me finally confront my deepest fears. And we got like real deep and I found some issues within myself. One of the best things I've seen so far in my life. What you're about to experience going through this program is what completely changed my life on every single level. Okay, be it health, wealth, relationships, higher purpose, you name it, this is the stuff that finally, finally produced that true, long-lasting personal transformation we're all after.